I just finished a wonderful interview with Jody from The Blue Hug. Why do I feel so passionate about this interview today? Because I know how many family caregivers struggle to help a person that they love take a shower, especially when we are sons giving moms showers, daughters giving dads showers, or even a a person who is a paid caregiver giving somebody a shower and modesty is a thing. So stick around, listen to Jody's wonderful product, why she started it, and where you can get it. Hey there, success seeker. Welcome to Dementia Caregiving for Families. Do you feel overwhelmed with the daily struggle of dementia caregiving? Looking for an easier path? You're in the right place. On this podcast, we teach you the skills to simplify caregiving. We unravel the mysteries of dementia and guide you through the often difficult behaviors. I'm Lizette, your host and fellow family caregiver. As an occupational therapist, I bring my professional and personal experience to this community. Here we speak the truth, but without the verbal vomit. I know you will find value in today's program. So buckle up while this flight takes off. Well, welcome back to today's episode of Dementia Caregiving for Families. I have been so wanting to get my next guest on this program this week because this is something that a lot of family caregivers struggle with, and not only family caregivers. And I thought it was very special when I came across her product on LinkedIn, because we all know if you have been helping somebody living with dementia for even a few months or so, sometimes the biggest battle you have is the battle of taking a shower or bathing. So I would like to welcome to today's program a good friend of mine, her name is Jody. I'm going to have Jody introduce herself and tell us a little bit of, about her background, and then we'll get into talking about what it is that she has come up with and brought out into the world. So welcome, Jody. Hi, thank you. Wonderful. So tell us a little bit about your background. I know that you are a you work in you have a non medical home health company, but tell us a little bit about yourself. Um. Okay, in short, I was in advertising for 30 years. Okay. And in 08, when the market crashed, I just wanted to get out of it. It had changed so much over the years. And I wanted to do something to help people. I always had. Mm -hmm. When I met my husband, I fell in love with his grandparents. They're the cutest people in the whole world. They died when they were 100 and 102. So they got to stay at home and live with my husband's um, aunt. They didn't have to go to assisted living or anything. And I just thought that was so cool. Um, But in 08, the whole world crashed and I lost my job in advertising. So Mm -hmm. long story short, I ended up starting a home care agency, which has been an amazing blessing. I've had it for 14 years um, and have been taking care of older people. And I love it. It It's wonderful. Wonderful. So literally your primary uh, vision and role in life is to help people stay at home. Right. Love it. Which is amazing. Exactly along the lines of everything that I do and the way I try to help people serve. But in your working through, you know, helping people at home and seeing things that people and family members are struggling with at home, obviously you saw something and that there was a need for assistance in this. And I know that you came up with this product. And how did you come up with this idea? And then tell people what is the product? Because I've kind of been teasing, you know, something (laughs) to do with bathing, but we really haven't said exactly what it is. So go ahead and tell us how you came up with this idea and then what it actually is. Well, I talked to so many families who can't afford caregivers. Mm -hmm. And I have become a huge resource person because of that, because I can't just say, I'm sorry, I can't help you and hang up the phone. Mm -hmm. 
So this man called me and he's the last one of like 50 families that I had talked to in tears because his mom lived with him and she would not take a shower. And it had been like three weeks and he just needed somebody to come give her a shower. You know, I have a minimum. My caregivers won't work less than four hours. They wouldn't even go. So I'm like, look, let me do some research for you. There has got to be something out there that can help. So I really just started doing research and looked and looked and looked. And there was not a product on the market that would help in the shower. Mm -hmm. So I just started thinking there's got to be a way to cover somebody up so that they other than a wet towel. Yeah, which is what everybody uses. And then that's just a pain and it's a mess. Or a shower curtain, like I did <laughs> for many years, you know, hold the shower curtain just up. Cover them up. Try to right. do what you're helping somebody with. <laughs> and so my husband and I just sat down and he is so, he's one of those people that can make, fix, do, build anything. Mm-hmm. So we sat down and we just started talking about what can we do? How can we solve this problem? So we talked about a garment. Obviously, it's a garment that you put on. And we started out with a fabric that was kind of like this, like just a shirt, silky fabric. Mm -hmm. He went downstairs, built it on the sewing machine. We talked about zippers. We talked about Velcro. We talked about snaps. We designed a couple of them. I got in the shower. I was like, oh, God, this sticks to you. You can't do this. So we came up with neoprene. Finally, we came up with neoprene. And... It's a garment and it, it's kind of like a, a hospital gown shape, okay? Mm-hmm. So for it people has, for people who are not watching this but are just listening, oh. it legitimately, no, don't keep it up. I'm, okay. I'm just going to tell them what I see, right? It gotcha. looks like a an old-fashioned kind of nightgown that mm-hmm. you can slide over somebody's head with a zipper up the front. And then I think there's zippers on the side too, right? Correct. There's Correct. a zipper on the front. It zips from the bottom bottom up. up. That's so you attach it at the neck and then it zips down to close. And that way, when they're sitting on the shower chair, you just unzip it up to here. And a you specific can spot that you need to. Then the zipper's on the sides. There's a zipper head at the top and at the bottom. The so bottom. you just unzip it enough to slip your hand in and wash. That's and then brilliant. you slip the, the shower head in and rinse. Right, And the cool thing about the neoprene is that it holds water so it keeps you warm. Right. But for people who um, who cannot see the garment, it it is a wonderful design because the entire time, even though you're opening or closing the zipper, the person's modesty is maintained. Correct. You don't have to see their private parts because- At all. I know, you know- for me, one of the biggest experiences that I had as an occupational therapist working with people is the fact that the more you are comfortable, you fake it till you feel it, right? The first male patient you work with, you fake it till you feel it. It's like, oh my goodness, I don't need to see this, right? The same thing for sons helping moms or right. moms helping, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, there. this doesn't even just have to be in geriatrics. I see a a 19-year-old boy who'd been in a car accident who Mm -hmm. cannot take care of himself, whose mom now has to help him bathe. Maybe mama doesn't want to see his goods and and his mama, his he doesn't want his mama to see. That's true. Right. So it's not just for dementia or older people, or or, you know, it it could be it's a very valuable tool for any type of a caregiving Uh situation. But one of the the experiences that I had as a therapist is that the more comfortable a caregiver is in the situation, the more comfortable the person is who's receiving the care. That is correct. And this will make such a big difference for people because a lot of times people with dementia are resistant to having bathing assistance because of modesty issues. So have you had that experience yourself when you've been working with people with this? Oh, yeah. And the thing about people with dementia and what I've experienced and been told, they're afraid more than anything else. And you're asking somebody that has the mind of a child now 
to take their clothes off in front of somebody that they, because they don't remember who you are, they don't, they're like, I don't think so. You know, I'm not doing it. So they have this and you have to convince them to put it on because this is obviously something new to them. A little different. They've never worn something in the shower before. But once you do, they love it. And Mm -hmm. the cool thing about it, too, because it holds the water, it's weighted. And that's why I call it a hug, because it's like a big, warm hug. And it's kind of like those weighted blankets. Yes. It really helps with calming people down. Right. Um, and the other part that I really like is it keeps in the warmth. Oh, yeah. So that's one of the other big things when a person takes a shower is you have two people that you're considering. The person who's helping is typically hot as heck. Oh, you're not kidding. You would not believe the stories I hear. Right. And then the people and these people that are in assisted livings, they're, you know how big those bathrooms are. Oh, yeah. They have those roll-in shower. And you're freezing. Charts. They're freezing. Right. But the person helping them is boiling. <laughs> they are. It's they are. So they don't, they, they turn the air on. Right. Right. Which means right. what? <laughs> then that person's freezing even more. I'm freezing even more. So right. having something that can keep that person warm. Right. Makes such a tremendous difference. So I, I get the whole concept about the bathing and the modesty and all of that. But when the shower is done, okay, tell me a little bit more about that because that's where I was curious. I'm like, oh, okay. I get this part, but now tell me the you know the the end part of it. How how does it work when when you've been wet and now you got to get dry? Okay, so as long as you have the garment on, it'll stay warm. Okay? okay, so when when the caregiver turns the shower off, the garment will be soaking wet. They'll mm-hmm. still stay seated on their shower chair. Yep. Then the caregiver will take a towel and she'll put it on their lap and Mm -hmm. she'll unzip it from the bottom up and just move the towel up to cover up their privates. Gotcha. And then continue to zip up. And for a woman, obviously move the towel on up to cover up her front. Then the either the caregiver can hold the towel, especially if it's somebody with dementia and you can't say hold this towel, you know, Mm -hmm. because they don't know what you're talking about. That's why I made these zippers. They're marine grade zippers. And you can do this with one hand. So you have because a caregiver needs four hands. And I really thought about that when I was making this because we started out with metal zippers. And I was like, no, this is never going to work because you're like, you know, it won't even go up and down. And so the caregiver can hold the towel, finish unzipping. It unlatches. You just go like that and it unlatches. Take it off. And lay it back and just let it lay back on the shower chair. And then you can dry. Get them dried off. Get their little robe on. Take them out. um, And then you'll come back and you'll take the shower garment. Hang it up on a plastic hanger in the shower. And rinse it it off real good. Let it dry. Mm -hmm. So Jody, have, um, have caregivers, do you, have you heard or have there been caregivers that have left the garment on and used the zips to dry the person underneath? No, because the the thing is soaking wet. Okay. So it stays so wet until, mm -hmm. so you actually have to take it off. Okay. Right. Well, cool. That is so wonderful. So what, what is the main goal of this particular, it's called the blue hug, right? Right. The blue hug. The blue hug. I love it. Water is blue and the blue uh-huh. hug is nice and warm and we can keep it. So what is the main goal of the blue gu- hug? Well, okay. So I have six sizes mm-hmm. and so I have a child size as well. Good. Because, you know, I was thinking kids who I have, I have a very good friend who has two special needs kids. Exactly. So they're in and out of CHOA, which is Children's Health Care of Atlanta, if you're not from Atlanta. And I was thinking all of these kids who get to a point where their mom is going to bathe them and they're like going through, you know? Yes. They need to be covered up because that's traumatizing to a child. It is very traumatizing. So I have real small all the way up to 2XL, which is pretty big. And so I, I have coverage for pretty much everybody you can think of. But my hope and prayer is that all of these people who have gotten to a point in their life where they have to be taken care of and it is 
so humiliating and distressing and stressful for the families. If you're, if you've never either been taken care of or had mm-hmm. to take care of somebody, you really don't know how it feels. You don't. It is in a very, very emotional time. You know, it's very stressful, especially if your parents move in with you and you're having to take care of them. And like you were talking about sons having to bathe their moms. But I mean, even daughters like, you know, and I thought about my mom when I created this. I mm-hmm. don't want her to have to take her clothes off in front of anybody, even me. Yeah, she's I agree. A, she's a strong Southern woman that it was a career woman. She was a nurse. She was in administration. She's, I'm not saying she's prideful, but I mean, no. that's, that's not something I will ever want her to have to go through. And I know there's millions of people that feel the same way about their parents. Absolutely. They I feel deserve, the same yeah, they deserve to have their dignity. And Absolutely. it's a passion of mine to, oh, to help these people. I am so excited about this product. I can I can tell you that um, I support two parents who have, um, you know, cognitive impairment. Mm. And my mom was in her early, early 40s when she had a massive aneurysm. Oh, my God. Um, and she is now 76. She just had her birthday. Um, She is 76 years old and she did remarkably well, but she is a, she is aging with the significant residual effects of a stroke. So the the right side does not work as well. And I remember a few months ago, I would have loved to have this product because a few months ago when, when she was starting to have mobility related issues and getting in and out of the tub. And, you know, I put my old little OT hat on and I modified the bathroom as best they would right. let me because that's another whole conversation yeah, it is. Um, as best they would let me. And I tried a shower chair and that worked for a little bit. And then I'm like, this is really not working for my mom. And I ended up choosing a sliding shower bench, which was yes. very counterintuitive from an OT perspective for me to actually choose to use that with my mom. But it has been a wonderful, you know, wonderful resource for her, particularly. My dad puts it in and out. But I had to help her with the first shower because I wanted to make sure that it worked. And this was shortly after she had fallen. She had a big old skin tear on her hand. Um, And, you know, I'm trying to, I legitimately using the shower curtain thing that I was (laughs) demonstrating earlier to give my mom her privacy. Right. And she is so, she was so sweet. She's like, I'm not modest. It's okay. No. But I'm like, mommy, I don't want you right. to have to. Right. So that's my mom. Now yeah. fast forward to another episode. I don't remember if this, this was actually before. My dad had gotten super sick right two years ago now, like exactly two years ago of this recording Today, two years ago, he came out of the hospital. Um, He had gotten COVID, other medical issues, and ended up back in the hospital, back out of the hospital, and ended up having to come stay with us, with me Uh and my husband. And I had to help my dad take a shower, right? How did he do? um, Thankfully, at that point, he was... I call it cuckoo for cocoa puffs. Anybody who <laughs> anybody who's been around me for more than a minute knows I have a terrible sense of humor. That's hilarious. Um, but but he was I know, I totally know what you're talking about. Super confused. Yeah. Thankfully, yeah. He was so confused at that moment in time, he didn't care. Right. But I did. I know. Right. I'm very grateful. He probably has forgotten this, but we we had dealt with the whole um, coming out of the hospital and all of a sudden we're not managing our bladder, you know, Sure. and the daily, you know, I had sheet protectors on the bed, et cetera, but the daily stripping the bed, I washing know. all of the sheets, doing all of that was like, I, I like that was going to drive me right over the edge. I had a, a, a friend who was a home health nurse, worked in home health and she brought me condom cats yeah 
And my husband graciously helped his father-in-law put on the condom kit so that we could cut down on all this laundry and everything. And it was a temporary thing. And I know for some people it isn't. But I had to make the difficult decision when my husband had to go out of town. Am I going to do the laundry or am I going to do a condom cat? I picked you a just got to do what you got to do. And and I, I did the whole OT thing like, yes, ma'am, I am. This is this is not happening. <laughs> Anybody who can see my face right now is going to totally get the, like I'm like, Whoo, <laughs> we are yeah. going to do this. And right. he got through it. Right. But even like I even can see an application for your garment with toileting. Okay. Because there are people who are so fearful of their clothing being pulled down. Oh. That you it could be slipped on over their upper body clothing as a dry garment. Right. And still give you access, but privacy. And you can turn it around backwards and put it on backwards for yeah. that application. Yeah. That that would be great because then you just hook it at the top and zip it down halfway down their back yeah. and then nothing's in the way. And you can even use it in a bed. Right. It doesn't have to be in the shower. You can still, if you can turn it around backward and uh-huh. put it on somebody in a bed, you can give somebody who is totally bedridden a sponge bath and still maintain their privacy and right. Warmth. That would keep them warmer than just covering them up with the sheet. Right. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. That's so a great it's, idea. It's more than just it's more than just in a shower that you could potentially apply this for certain people. Not right. everybody is resistant to right. Having you know their their clothing removed and so on in toileting, but some people are. Yeah, and I think it's worth trying because it affords a person a little bit of privacy, but access. Right, and you so know, they could use it in multiple ways. Yes, for yeah. sure. Yeah, like for sure. And I mean, I always I'm always think outside the box. What can we do? One piece of equipment. What can you do multiple different right. ways? That's good. Right. And what are the reasons most of most people typically have struggles with bathing um, for a couple of very important reasons? We don't know. And oftentimes people never, ever, ever, ever say they've had a bad experience, either being molested or assaulted or something. And what we as the caregivers see is this behavior. Yes. And that is a that is a that is a topic that came up when um, an influencer had posted a video about this. Somebody mentioned that. That of course I've never even thought about that, but so many, a huge percentage of people get molested in their life. And a never, lot. ever, ever. No, yeah, nobody told knows. Anybody. Right. So I even have had patients over the years when I worked as an occupational therapist with people that I would try multiple different things to solve the problem that as the very last resort, I would actually have to say to the daughter, do you know, have you ever been told do you have any sort of inkling that your right. mom has been raped, assaulted, molested, anything sexually related that you were aware of that could potentially explain what I'm seeing? Right. Because families don't necessarily talk about these things. Oh, no. You know, and so... I'll just use myself as an example because, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm me. I can speak for me. I was about 19 years old, right? So not super young, but also not like a child old enough, old enough to, to really know how to truly handle this. And right. I was walking home from a shopping place, like 
um, you know, I lived around the corner, so I walked. And a car on a sidewalk pulled was, you know, was in the cross that I had to cross over. And this beautiful individual decided beautiful sunny day in South Carolina, South Africa in the middle of the day, we're not talking nine o'clock at night, um, was jerking off in his car. Like I, oh, wow. I had I had the front row view, you know. I mean, obviously I turned around and walked away. Yeah. But if that was something that was extremely traumatizing to me, yes. how when I can't express to other people that I saw this or whatever, right? Now we're fast forward 50 years and I have dementia, and that's right. the loop that's in my head. And you bring me a male caregiver. Right. I'm like, maybe Lizette's going to say. No, (laughs) ma'am. Right. Exactly. Uh Uh-huh. So we don't know what we don't know. Right. We don't know what people have experienced. I've been through. And they may have been so small that they don't even know. But it's ingrained. But it's in there. Forever. Right. So, it you know, is. for anybody who is listening, who has a family member who is struggling with bathing, mm-hmm. you've got to think outside the box more than just, oh, they're being resistant. There right. is a reason that they are being. Absolutely. Resistant. Always. We just don't know what it is. Right. And Jody's um, product, the Blue Hug, can be something that you can try to see if helping maintain modesty means that you can get the cleanliness yeah so that we can keep people healthy at home right. so jody tell us a little bit how do people actually get your product where can they find it they can just go to my website mm-hmm. it's thebluehug.com mm-hmm. and there is a size chart that you measure here i can show you with one of these kind of tape measures okay Measure like, a, like just a regular um, clothing tape measure. Yeah, just yep. measure the biggest part of your body. Like if your breasts are way bigger than your belly, you know, however you're built. If your hips are the biggest part, measure the biggest part, and then on the chart it will tell you what size to get. What size? And like I said, I have six sizes, and you just buy it right off of the website, and I'll mail it to you. That is wonderful. Super and easy. So- I would, um, it will, all of the information will be in the show notes. So we'll put the link in the show notes for people to find, um, you know, to directly go there. But I, I think this has such a, such a wide application for people that hasn't even been explored yet. And I'm very excited. Uh, I was Jody's first podcast. So yes. I will, one day I can say I knew her when. Um, yeah. Because uh, I just see such a value in this product. And I know that the people who this truly can make such an impact on people's lives and the quality of their life. And I mean, I know it has application in facilities, but at home, I think right. this is a, like, I think this is well worth people's investment, especially if they are taking care of somebody, not a husband taking care of a wife combination but a son and a daughter taking care of a parent um, or even a professional caregiver like you said you know I don't want other people touching my mama's goods Um, Uh -uh. I want my mom's privacy and modesty to be maintained and what a wonderful gift we can give people by maintaining their modesty and keeping them at home so I'm very excited about your product, Jody. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You are welcome. So I'm going to put the information in the show notes and I will be back later on. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for joining me today, Success Seeker. I pour my heart and soul into this program to serve you. You can serve me by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. And join our free Facebook group, Dementia Caregiving for Families. It's a positive and proactive space to navigate dementia caregiving together, get practical tools, and find support 
but without the verbal vomit. Be a part of our community where we seek to find peace of mind and ease, despite a dementia diagnosis. So join today and see you next time as our flight takes off.